You're listening to Roddy Clear, winner of Best Radio DJ at the Pure M Awards 2017. And my guests in studio this week are a band called Unquiet Nights. They're from up north, and I'll be talking to uh, one of the band members. They didn't all make it down today, but that doesn't matter. We'll still hear the music, and we'll have a chat, and we'll find out what they're all about. And it turns out that uh, I know them actually quite well from years back. But such is my brain at this stage of my life that I don't remember these things. Anyway, let's have a listen to what they sound like. A piece called Promise of You, a former re- song of the week on Quiet Nights. band are called Unquiet Nights and that was a song called Promise of You that's a former song of the week here on the programme and I'm delighted to say that from the band Luke Mathers uh, joins me mm-hmm. Luke you're very welcome in and you're the only member of the band in with us this evening the two other lads are Matteo and Francesco that's right yeah that was yeah. the lineup. the the recorded stuff we do is a little different than the touring part oh, okay so the band kind of involves the same five or six people but in, mm. in different combinations because I, w- I was based in italy for six years yeah so we did a lot of touring in italy and our two italian musicians there but then the first album i had recorded in belfast so there was a lineup of musicians at that time that i've started working with again right. since i came back here so it's a tangled mess but 
uh, uh, one that you're very well aware yeah. of. Anyway, you're, you're able to handle it. Let me just read what you write, write on your, your own biographies. You're a band from Northern Ireland, uh, formed in Belfast, relocated to Europe, picked up much radio worldwide, supported millions of million selling artists, recorded with Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, appeared on national television, released a couple of albums and toured in nine countries. There's a heck of an accolade. I mean, there's a lot of you've done uh, and, and, and I'm sure you're not the only band out there who are like that, who've worked your socks off and yet your name is not as up there as it should be. I, I'm sure from your well, point of view. Thank you for you, saying so, you yeah. Know. That's what I've been telling myself. Well, I mean, that last piece of music, I mean, to me, I, we're, we're talking about it because it's got a, a very distinct 80s sound to it, but why shouldn't it be a hit alongside everything else? I mean, it, it's the way of the world at the moment, doesn't it? It's very hard for people like yourself to, to get that foothold. And you've said to me that you've known me a long time, which we were talking about earlier on, mm-hmm. from way back. That scares me. At the other radio station. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so what? You, I mean, you've been together what, as a band, as, as Unquiet Nights. We recorded the drum tracks, you know, for the first album songs in 2010, and then the first album was released in January or February 2012. So the recorded, released output has taken off since then. Yeah, has how much has the lineup changed in those years? Is it much? Is it pretty much the core is still there? It was more or less the first album was uh, me and a guy called Roger who was on drums and um, I moved to Italy and he didn't. <laughs> so we still met up and toured and we, we played London and Amsterdam and a few places while not living in the same location to be able to rehearse. Mm. And then I started touring with two Italian musicians in the in the lineup. My guest in studio, my guest in studio is Luke from the band On Quiet Nights. Ruddy Clare's Irish Music Show. 34 years supporting Irish acts. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, don't forget, later on, our featured album comes from uh, an expat by the name of Galli, uh, Gallagher. It's where to get the nickname comes from. The Occoquan River is the name of the album. Three from that coming up later on. My guests in the studio are on Quiet Nights, or at least uh, Luke Mathers. Luke, are you the, are you the, the main unquiet nighter <laughs> as it were I mean it's, it was your uh, concept in the first well, it's place. always been my thing yeah I'm the only constant member of the band it's a vehicle for my songwriting so, uh, so you, are you the main songwriter then well it's the only songwriter it's my stuff yeah, you know, yeah. So. Uh, what I meant by that is did the guys have any, any input on, on that at all or musically I presume melody lines yeah the songs mainly come fully formed because mm. I'm obsessive like that so I kind of <laughs> bring the full product and oh, what took you to Italy my partner's Italian so I decided I'm up for trying new things, so yeah. we did six years over there, and I was keeping the band going throughout that time, so it made it a more interesting journey anyway. It must be quite difficult. I suppose it was, but it, the whole music thing isn't easy to begin with, so True enough. in some ways it widened the base from which we would get more opportunities, so we did a lot of things that we wouldn't have got the chance to do if I was only based here. Mm. Well, like a lot of bands in this country, they find sometimes that they have to go, be it to Italy or to the UK or wherever the case may be. Did you find that was the case? I mean, was it, the scene in Northern Ireland is quite healthy, though, isn't it, musically speaking? Well, there's a lot of... Um, it it, always it was. produces a lot of bands, yeah, but there is sort of a bottleneck effect mm. where there are only so many opportunities at the the bigger festivals and stuff, and you get to a point where anything that's available for you to do, I, I felt like... It's sort of done it, and the things I hadn't done, I was never going to be allowed to do. Mm. So, I. Uh, <laughs> Are you frustrated by. You sound as though you're quite frustrated by what's happening up there, from your point of view. I don't know if it's up there or down here or in general, but I think that there was a different attitude whenever in Italy and Germany and different places that it's hard to be a prophet in your own country <laughs> kind of thing. So, we, we got off, we got treated differently and spoken to differently and offered things that we wouldn't have been offered. Yeah. So it, it it it's definitely to be recommended for any band. Sorry, that light flashing there was my phone. It might be a <laughs> little off putting. Um White car lights on. Is that your car? Have you got a nope, white car? I'm not no. driving a white car today. No, I don't know who that is. Sorry, that's just uh, Johnny outside. Uh, that's uh, a limo driver. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> it's my limo driver. Uh, I, with the amount of work you've put down, I mean, you, you're uh, at this uh, a long time now. How do how do you manage to keep keep it together? I mean, I, I assume when you started out, you had a plan in your own head where you'd want to be in five years down the line. Mm-hmm. And now you're gone past that five-year mark. And have you achieved what you want to achieve? Are you happy with where you're at, basically? As long as you're, I think, moving forward and you've done a little bit more than that you hadn't done the mm. year before. But you're not disillusioned is what I'm, I'm getting at. I think you can get disillusioned with the way the music business has 
with the way it works now and mm. the trajectory that your career would have to take and the money you would have to put into it, yeah. you know, yeah. privately in order to make it increase the chances of certain things happening. But I'm very happy with what we've done and there are things that I want to do in the future that I think we should be able to do just mm. with enough effort and it's very rewarding that way. Yeah, it's a tough old business and you need, need to tell somebody like yourself, I mean, it's bad enough uh, in the Republic uh, I, and certainly in Dublin, from what I hear, a lot of bands always give up at the fact that it's saturated. There are so many bands and, and this programme alone, the amount of stuff that comes in every week to try and get something onto the programme is quite difficult. In, in terms of bands, I mean, the, the volume of bands in, in Northern Ireland is, is it quite the, is it much the same as it is down in the South. Uh, you know, is it difficult for bands to get airplay in, in stations up north? I'm sure it probably is, yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem to bother you that much, though. I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't bother me that much anymore because there's certain signposts that have been checked off in terms yeah. of what I want to do. And most radio stations have been on a handful of times or enough times not to be bitter about it. So it kind I of know just. What you mean, yeah. It's a bigger. I mean, music is a global career. So yeah. if you're not getting played in Ireland, you can get played somewhere else. And then maybe when you're not concentrating on Ireland, you start getting played in Ireland. So. Mm. Is Europe, I mean, you spent quite a bit of time in Italy, you were saying there. Is, was that a big, was that quite a different experience for you in terms of promoting the band or, or, or you know, getting on festivals or getting onto radio or whatever the case totally, may be? Totally, yeah. I mean, we've had every version of, the, of our biographies and stuff have been translated into German, <laughs> French, Spanish, well, Italian. Yeah. You know, and at any one time you're trying to promote a single, you maybe set different release dates and have a different biography in a different language. And then maybe sometimes you have to do an interview where... You, the basis of you doing the interview is that you have to kind of pretend that you know a little bit of that language and then sure. you end up, you yeah. have to wing it. And I would imagine as well that the attitude towards the kind of music you make would differ from country to country as well, depending on where... I know that up, up in the Scandinavian countries, they, they love their rock up there. Yeah. Whereas maybe further south, down, down into Germany, down to France, even Spain, that the attitude towards music changes. Have you found that? The attitude does change, but especially if you're a type of band that has a versatile sound... Um, if you're a death metal band, you're only going to sign a certain way and then you're in line to be booked in those kind of festivals. Yeah. But I think that the thing that we're doing has got a fairly broad base. So sometimes we've been played on folk shows or, or been invited to play jazz festivals in Austria. That must be very weird then, you know. Well, it's all weird. You just do it and turn up and <laughs> see what You get happens. paid. That's the main thing. Yeah, but if you restrict yourself to just rock festivals with the Kerrang stereotype, you can be disappointed with that too. So... Yeah. Some of the the best experiences came out of things that maybe weren't expecting to be mm. your fan base. And does being Irish lend any weight? Does, yeah. does well, it help you? It's one of the biggest factors. Um, anytime you try to get played or booked or anything, it really does come into it. I, I interrupted you there because you have an album here, uh, Postcards in Real Time. We might as well play a track from it here as well since you had it in your hand. And, uh, you know, so is there anything, any particular track on this you think would be a, a good choice? Gave George Best City a spin. Oh, okay, there we go. There was about yeah. six, something like yeah, that. Yeah, well done, number six. Oh, it's not reading for some reason. Uh, this is um, On Quiet Nights. Luke is my guest in studio from the band. This particular album is called Postcards in Real Time. It's your second album. That's the second Here's album. Yeah. Okay, this is George Best City from On Quiet Nights. <laughs> i 
as a place can seem a little too small And you can read the writing on the wall But I can't deny what I came along And everything about it seems to glow Crossing the east bridge I was caught in the breeze Leaves are brown and falling from the trees The bravest city in the world I hope she gets what she deserves But I'm just trying to make it through this life best city Unquiet Nights, and that's the track taken from an album called Postcards in Real Time, and that's called George Best City. Uh, yeah, one of the Greek sons, the great sons of, of uh, Northern Ireland. Um, Luke, uh, in terms of, of the new album, you, from the first album to this album to the third album, has there been much of a change in, in style? Yeah, I would say that there has been. The first album, technologically, it was a lot less developed in yeah. terms of how the recording equipment I had and stuff, and it was a tiny apartment. They didn't I wasn't able to really jack up guitar amps and mic them and stuff, so there's a lot of workarounds with the first album. And then the second album, we had more studio time, and it's more of a saturated amp sound that I kind of I was happy with. And then I, I dispensed with some of the layers that were needed to be used in the first album. Yeah. But you try and get better at stuff you're doing. and well, You naturally evolve as well, I suppose, even as a writer as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you listen back to the first album now, do you think, oh, I could have done that a whole lot better? Or I could have written that a whole lot better, or whatever the case may be. In terms of the recording of, I mean, there there are songs that I like, but I just I wish I could have, you know, I could have another day in the studio, just tweaking some of the sounds and making a better record out of some of the songs yeah. on the first album. But I, I don't complain too much. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for some of those the songs on the first album still did a job. Yeah, they did the job at the yeah. time and what they needed to do at that yeah. time as with this album. So the third album then, you're talking about December release on that. Um, and and um, the players on that are yourself and the two lads, the two Italian guys. And are there other musicians as well? Well, as I mentioned, the the first the drummer on the first album is a, is a guy I went to school with. Mm. And I'm trying to rope him into recording some drum tracks, you know, that would feature on the third album. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want to rule that out. Yeah, but I don't think there'll be anybody other than those mentioned that I'm going to yeah, use for the... Yeah. For the and you're happy enough with the way it's, it's, it's progressing at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm yeah. happy with the songs and um, wh whenever you're happy with the songs, I think it usually turns out well. Yeah. KCLR. Roddy Clare's Irish Music Show. Sunday night from 8.
On Quiet Nights and a song called Greatest Revival and that's taken from postcards in real time and uh, Luke Mathers from the band is... Uh, uh, well, yes, you are the band. You are uh, on Quiet Nights. This is fair enough to say. Would the lads object to that, no? Probably not. I mean, <laughs> cool. I just refer to it as my thing. I mean, I sort of had the first album together before really talking about touring and then it was more a case of being offered this thing. Do you have time off work to, to come and do it with me or whatever? And... Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. But mm. I think it's necessary because the hardest thing for a band who don't have advances from record labels and stuff is the time off work. And mm. you, being a three-piece on stage has a lot to do with that as well because it's one car. Sometimes you're, you know, one or two hotel rooms instead of two or three. Yes. And that it's just necessity. Yeah, it works out quite well. So a three-piece is what you are at the moment when you tour. Yeah, it's three pieces. Studios, obviously, is, is a different ball game yeah. you know, altogether. You know, yes. It's the only way we could have done as much as we've done touring wise. Yeah. What do you hope for the future then, Luke? What's, what's, what's uh, you know, I mean, you have the album, obviously, you're working on that at the moment, mm -hmm. but uh, gig wise and touring wise, and will you go back over to mainland Europe again? No, definitely, yeah. Uh, well, I just want to get to do that on a more consistent basis mm. and to kind of make a mark in terms of being able to do clubs of a certain size and have a certain amount of people turn up and mm. just to be able to do that full time is really what I'm aiming at. Are you, do you work outside of the band? Do you have a job, like a regular I, job? I have other things that generate income, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a nine to five. Yeah, yeah, so. that's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So you still seem quite positive about it at the same time. You obviously love what you do. That might actually be something to do with it. The fact that I don't treat it as you know 100 percent of my income has to come from music mm. because i think that you would get very bent out of shape quickly if if that was your case so mm. the less that i depend on music for income the happier i am and the more it lends to creativity i think well there's very few people who sat in that seat there and said they're in it for the money yeah i think money and i think any musician even successful musicians who are filthy rich would say that money is a byproduct of what they do exactly yeah it's 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 a happy byproduct obviously you know and obviously you want to be successful and you want you want to make money but it's not the driving force no it, it, has, it hasn't you know. been either with anybody i know who's done yeah. half decently right. at it i gotta say thank you uh, as we come to draw to the end because you've driven you've come down from the north uh, to be on the program tonight and that's a fair trip you know it's not as though you're coming to dublin which is what an hour and a half from belfast where what part of the north are you, are you from county armagh it's just south of loch Ney, if you look at the map yeah. just on yeah. the banks there. that's a fair and did you come down today yeah, this morning, yeah. Yeah, and you're staying overnight at Kilkenny tonight. Yeah. Yeah, and doing the tour <laughs> and all the rest. Look, it's been a great pleasure to have you in. And the, the next piece we're going to play is not from the album. This is, uh, we played it on the programme last week. Actually, I unintentionally played it on the programme last week. I had okay. intended keeping it for tonight because this is the new single. And it's just, well, last week would have been its first ever airplay, I believe. You know, so this is the second that we know of. <laughs> no, tell me about this one, Young Believers. So Young Believers is uh, a single. I just wanted to put something out to bridge the gap from the second album because I thought it had been a bit long since anybody heard from us. So it was kind of a lead in. It was a song that we play live a bit in Europe and it's the kind of thing we did live, more representative of the live gigs. So mm. I liked it for that reason and it's out as a single. What was the name of the band that you said you were with when we met before? Love Child. But that yeah. was 2002-ish, 2004, yeah. Isn't it a funny business all the same? And, uh, you know, and, and I hope you forgive me for saying, but I don't remember. I remember the band, but I can't remember yourself. But there you go. I completely understand. <laughs> a lot of people go through, I suppose, uh, through a program. Look, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you and her ladyship in the corner. They're taking the photographs as we go along. Very quiet, though. You know, she won't say a word. And she's the reason that, that you went out to Italy. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> She's quiet because the on-air light is on at the minute. But <laughs> Can't shut her up when it's off. <laughs> Luke, listen, thanks a million for, uh, for popping in. The best of luck uh, with the new album when it does come out. And I look forward to hearing it as well. And the best of luck with this single as well. Thanks very much. Thanks for playing it. You're welcome. This is Unquiet Nights and a song called Young Believers. <laughs>
what a great sound he has. It's called Shadows and it's Mark O'Reilly from his brand new album, L'Autre Politique, with uh, apologies to anybody who speaks French out there, but a track on there called Shadows is the last track on the album. Before that, it was Young Believers, which is the brand new song from Unquiet Nights. You heard it uh, first last week, uh, getting its uh, na- uh, radio debut. And thanks to Luke from the band uh, for hopping in for the chat and travelling all the way down from Armagh to be on the programme tonight and safe journey. Roddy Clear's Irish Music Show, Sunday night from 8.